third part of part one of chapter four, balancing chemical reactions or balancing equations. Now, this is something that I'm going to use the, the textbook presentation. I will go through this, but then I'm going to show you a way that I like to solve chemical reactions because I think that it saves time and uh, I think it's better. At any rate, I'm going to present both of them to you. So if there's one that you have a preference for, use the one that works, use the one that you're comfortable with. Um, and so we'll proceed from there. Okay, balancing chemical reactions obey the law of conservation of mass. So all atoms present at the beginning of the reaction must be present at the end of the reaction. So if you saw something like this, um, MgO plus H2 yields H2O, well, if that was the entirety of the reaction, what happened to the Mg? Question mark. Question mark. Well, you would see that written there. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that because what I really want to illustrate here is this is, and I'm going to go with orange, this is a bad reaction because it doesn't show the magnesium. Everything that's in the reactant side is going to be on the product side. In a balanced equation, the number of atoms of each element on the left side of the balanced equation is equal to the number of atoms of that element on the right side. So if you have hydrogen, if you have two hydrogen on the reactant side, you're going to have two hydrogen on the product side. If you have 15 oxygen on the reactant side, you're going to have 15 oxygen on the product side. And this is where the method that I'm going to show you comes into handy. This word equal, I want you to be able to think, okay, equation, because that's the direction that I'm going to go in. Now, here's a reaction of sulfur dioxide and oxygen. So what we have is our unbalanced reaction. We've got SO2 and O2 reacting to form SO3. We've already kind of seen this, or something similar to this when we did H2 and O2. What you have on the left-hand side here is one sulfur atom and four oxygen atoms. On the product side, you've got one sulfur atom and three oxygen atoms. Well, where did that oxygen go? You're not going to be able to you know, produce that oxygen as a free O on the, other, on the product side. So what you have to do is come up with the perfect ratio for molecules of SO2 and molecules of O2 to react with one another to form the perfect ratio or the perfect number of SO3. And what this shows is that two moles of SO2 react with one mole of O2 to produce two moles of SO3. And so what does that show us on a single atom level? That shows us that there are two sulfur atoms, six oxygen atoms. Now those two sulfur atoms and six oxygen atoms are divided up amongst a number of different molecules and they ultimately produce two sulfur atoms and six oxygen atoms in two SO3 molecules but that's what you have to do there's this balance that you have to attain by adding a number of these molecules to get that right ratio of reactants and products to one another now when balancing chemical equations you change the coefficients. That's maybe the most important thing. The coefficient, that's the number in front of that symbol, of that molecular symbol or elemental symbol. You can change the coefficients, but not, and I'm going to highlight this in red, indicating bad, not the subscripts. Okay, so change the coefficients. Do not change the subscripts of a chemical formula because if you think back to H2O, well, if I threw a 2 down here, H2O and H2O2 are not the same thing. So you do not change those subscripts in order to balance the reaction. So changing the coefficients changes the amounts of the compounds involved in the reaction, whereas changing the subscripts changes the identities. That's basically what I was just saying. So be very, very careful and thoughtful of that. Okay, now the next item is your steps. So balancing chemical equations, the steps. Um, if a polyatomic ion is present in, or as both reactants and products, balance them as a unit, not as separate elements. That is, if sulfate, SO4, 2 minus, is present on both sides of the arrow, balance that as units of sulfite or sulfate not as separate sulfur and oxygen. That's just going to save you some of the, the stress of balancing them because you know that you can kind of look at SO4 as one entity. 
and or sorry so4 2 minus as one entity if there is one so4 2 minus on the reactant side lo and behold there's going to be one so4 2 minus on the product side so you really don't have to worry about balancing those or sorry if you balance those coefficients you've balanced the sulfurs and the oxygens that each of these molecules contributes balance the elements that appear in only one reactant and one product reserving that any that appear in more than one reactant or more than one product until last start by balancing the first element that appears and continue from left to right so if you see something like h2o and let's just say molecule x molecule x plus h2o yields um let's just go with o2 plus molecule y and in molecule y there's no oxygen and in molecule x there's no oxygen well oxygen is only in one location so you only have to worry about balancing or sorry you should balance that oxygen first there so then if you put a two coefficient in front of that boom those oxygens are balanced you'll have to worry about x and y and those hydrogens but this is saying if you see something that's only in one spot balance that okay. now balance after that you're going to want to balance any remaining elements this may require changing previously determined coefficients so this method i would or i commonly refer to as the guess and check method so you try to balance something and then as it turns out when you when you balance that one thing that's going to have an effect on something else so then you have to go back and you know you end up with like step one is 3a and a is just a very a, a just random element does not matter plus b yields c plus d okay so you put that three out in front of a and oh does that balance oh well now that throws one element that's in molecule a off so now i gotta scribble this out and i gotta double this i gotta up this to six because then i've got this balanced okay well that's balanced that's balanced so you have these different steps and my experience of balancing chemical reactions this way is i get sheets of notebook paper and i just write and write and write and write okay now i will say that is one of kind of the drawbacks because you have like it's almost like you're writing a paper and you go through like 10 rough drafts um okay so then once you've done that what you want to do is you always want to verify the balanced equation so you want to verify the number of each type of atom or sorry verify the number of each type of atom on the reactant side and the product side are the same you want to verify that the coefficients are in the smallest this is a very important key smallest whole number ratio that is if the coefficients have a common factor divide the all the coefficients by that number or by that common factor to reduce the ratio if there is a fractional coefficient at sorry if there is a fractional coefficient you want to adjust that so that's a whole number so if you saw something like this 6a plus 3b yields um, 6c well that has a common um common factor you could divide this by three all of those by three and then you get the common ratio of 2a plus b yields 2c all right i'm going to stop right there but we are going to proceed onward with this stuff so i hope this is helpful